Welcome back to the studio. If you're new, I'm Slu. Welcome to this crazy, crazy place. So where to begin? This video is going to be the most in-depth video of my studio space. I've been here since May of 2021, almost three years now. It has evolved so much. I have so much to say about it. I have documented every single step of the way from the moment I moved out of my old studio to the most recent renovation, which you kind of see behind me with this drawing stage. So if you're interested after you watch this video, I made a playlist in the description of sort of all of the studio builds and renovations because those are like my favorite videos and I've made it quite a lot in the uh, last few years. But you know, I go on YouTube black holes looking at other people's studio spaces. But there's a lot to say about this. I'm going to take you through all of the sections of the studio, why it's functional, some of the challenges of building this space, how it's evolved, why it's evolved, go into depth of the equipment, the camera gear, the painting setup. If you've ever had questions about something within this space or how I do things, I'm sure I'll answer it in today's video. It's gonna be wonderful quite in depth for the people who like the in-depth stuff. So the space is a giant square-ish with a separate office. The big room that we're in now is 36 by 46 feet. And then the little office space that used to be the podcast room and is now sort of my office painting area, that is 18 by 12 feet. So it's just under 2,000 square feet, but it has super tall ceilings. You know, it came with this kitchenette. I did not build this kitchenette. So it was kind of ideal for moving in here because it had this sort of separate office that's a lot of space and it came with this sink and cabinets. And that was sort of the bare canvas I was given way back yonder. Also the rent, I know everyone is interested in how much I pay. Um, I got a crazy COVID deal right when I moved in 2021. That was only lasted for one year. Then I signed a three-year option that increases every year within my contract. The monthly rent is $4,500 a month, not including utilities. So a lot of electricity, AC, heating, internet, and that is quite expensive. It's been really tough sometimes for me uh, to pay for it some months. Obviously some months are better than others. And the first year I raised money to you know, build it and move in here. I talk all about that in the building series video again in the playlist below. And you know, that actually is a pretty good price, believe it or not, for this amount of space in New York City, close to Manhattan. So that's that, money is money. We could talk about money. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the description. So the first things I wanna show you is what hasn't really changed in the three years. When you enter the studio, you kind of are facing this mini gallery with this couch set up right next to the kitchenette. And these couches have pretty much been in the same place. I really like the setup. It's really sort of welcoming to people, I think. It's sort of like a chill area. Also this table and rug, you know, right by uh, the kitchenette where everything is. This has sort of all stayed the same. Um, again, simple and I really like just the flow of it. I have acquired quite a bit of cooking materials. I got a microwave. I recently just got an air fryer. I have a blender for smoothies. I make a ridiculous amount of smoothies. You can see by my collection of peanut butter. I know that's a little weird and I'm gonna throw them out soon. I thought it would just be funny to save all the peanut butter and almond butter, nut butters that I've used since I've moved in here. Anyways. Um, I love tea, I don't drink coffee, so I love tea, I have it there. And you know, snacks galore, especially now hosting events. I have like paper cups and trays and napkins and things like that. It's just a nice kitchen and I eat a lot here. You know, I'm here like six days a week, 10 hours every day at least, so um, a lot of meals and eating goes down here. Moving this way is also sort of what has sort of stayed the same. So this is sort of the photo area Place, I use this so much, especially in the first two years. We have the seamless backdrops, pink, white, and blue. Those are interchangeable. They are all able to go up and down through this little system. It's a great little kit I bought online. I think they are nine feet seamless backdrops. It's like a weird size. It's not like the generic one. They're super long and a little shorter. But I've had these since my old studio and they work amazing. I've Shot so many photos here for painting reference, models, actually taking photos of paintings, and another friends 
who used this studio um, because, again, this place was originally made to be a collaborative resource, not just for myself, but for other people. This area right here um, has changed. This is like a nice desk that I cut down, has a little storage shelf where my speakers are. This is a great sort of central location of the studio. I feel like it's like a good central place. I sit here a lot of the times when I am hosting the figure drawing sessions. Um, back here, this is sort of like a junk corner for tripods, C-stands, the lighting fixtures. Um, I got an air purifier, but that sort of just stays as like weird storage. And then back here as well, this is, I built specifically for my drawing horses to be stored. Um, this kind of custom closet for more storage for scrap wood and materials and things like that. It actually has been working out really great, even though I just got more drawing horses and I can't fit them all. I could stack about 15 of them here. So storage is really important. And um, you'll notice in this whole studio tour, there's not many drawers or cabinets. Right here is one of them, this nice trunk that I didn't want to get rid of. And inside it actually is a bunch of the podcasting equipment, actually all of the podcasting equipment. So I didn't stop the podcast, but as you'll see later, I broke down the dedicated podcast room. I could do the podcast anywhere, and I still plan on doing many podcasts with awesome artists, but for right now, it's stored in there and it's great. Now, moving over here, this little cubby room has been certainly one of the biggest changes. Um, if you saw my most recent video, I did the biggest sort of renovation of the studio. We'll get to it for all the drawing sessions for my organization, Studio Slew. This whole wall back here used to just be storage with shelves. Now this is a dedicated sort of office and more specifically a changing room for models. So a very normal thing, especially when we have nude models here posing for the open figure drawing sessions, which I do twice a week, if not more. You know, the models need to be obviously respected, but they need their own sort of space to change. The restroom in this building is kind of far away on this floor, so they can shut this and have a private place to change. I really like this. It worked out perfectly. I think the blue matches, it's great. This curtain can be moved also, and it makes like sort of a partition wall from the drawing area. And then obviously a lot of the time there aren't models here. This is just a office. You know, a lot of my friends come and work here if they want to attach their laptop to this monitor. And it's just a great little office. I think that's important. Another little workspace. And it's already been used a lot. And I had a really fun time building it. It's very cozy in here. And instead of going this way to talk about the drawing sessions and the new stage, we're, we'll get to that. But we have to talk about the sponsor first, which I think everyone will actually be interested in hearing about because it has to do with how I make all my money, why I buy all these expensive machines, and it's a tool to help content creators. So here comes a rant about video editing. That's why, you know, I buy all these really expensive computers because they're invaluable tools to my business. I make videos and you need to edit and put the pieces of footage together like a puzzle in a creative fun way. You need good tools. But you know, the last two years, I'd say there's been this max exodus away from the super high level professional editing softwares because one, they're too confusing, they take too much time, and there is new technology, there is new tools coming out that are way easier and way faster. Filmora is sponsoring this video, but I was testing out Filmora's platform and app before they reached out, so it was a perfect integration. Full disclosure, I wouldn't take a sponsor if it didn't integrate seamlessly in my life. I've used it specifically for short form content, which I'll talk about in a second. Filmora is a multi-platform editing application utilizing really crazy technology, specifically AI stuff to help make editing faster and more accessible. Now, I know AI is a touchy subject, especially within my world. If you're watching this, probably your world, the art world, generative AI art is not great, it's a disservice to a lot of artists, but tools are different. And I actually will flip the script and say AI tools within video editing is actually very positive because it is making what is normally a super high level professional skill set. it is bringing that bar way lower for everyone to utilize. It is amazing technology and everything these days has new technology, you'll never take away the artist, especially with video editing. There's so much input that a person needs to do. There are just technology that makes 
small parts of the editing process a lot more streamlined. So for example, Filmora 13 has text-based editing. If I heard about that even three years ago, I would lose my marbles. You could record something talking, you can transcribe that audio in Filmora, and then through that transcription, you could edit the text and when you edit that text, it will cut your video. So that is just magical and mind blowing. They also have amazing masking tools. Masking is an editing terminology used for kind of cutting out parts of the video to overlay things. It's, it's even challenging for me to explain and do myself. Filmora's masking tools are unbelievably awesome. I think one of the most challenging things for me within this world and my job as an editor is going from 4K widescreen for YouTube videos and then having to recycle and translate those videos into vertical format for Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, TikTok. It's been really nice to use Filmora for my short form because it has all of these different templates for the different formats ready to go. And it's extremely streamlined. Again, it is saving me time. I still have to go and edit and do things, but it is just one more step that saves me some time. Also the phone application specifically for short form is really beneficial. I feel like a lot of people are really digging that because you don't need these giant computers and powerful things to edit TikTok. They also have this awesome thing called AI Copilot, which I think is just really unique. It's sort of like this buddy there ready to answer and help you execute things within any part of the video process. You can sort of just type it in. I've experimented with it a little. I think it's a really cool idea. I'm excited for them to push that. If you just look at the climate of the world, it is all video based, content, content, content. And for people like me, if you're an artist, if you're a brand, if you wanna increase your presence, creating videos is like one of the best ways to do that now. So you can download Filmora 13 for free in the description below. But if you truly love it, like I do, I think it's epic. You can use this code for $5 off your purchase, which is also linked in the description below. Now back to the tour, we have a lot to cover, but we're gonna go backwards this way again to sort of push this way and then into that room. But this area right here has indeed actually changed a lot. And I know it may look boring and you're like, oh, storage shelves and a library, but this is sort of some of my favorite stuff. First of all, the library. I'm a huge fantasy nerd, sci-fi fantasy. I really got into reading books pretty recently, only like, you know, maybe four years ago. Um, first sort of series besides Lord of the Rings was Mistborn. Um, by Brandon Sanderson, then I really got into more Brandon Sanderson. So many awesome books. I just finished the Red Rising trilogy. I'm taking a break before the next trilogy. Just having tchotchkes, bookshelves, it's just warmth. And I, I made sure that I wanted to have that in the studio. So this is the same and the storage shelf and all my knickknacks are the same. Um, but sort of this is a two part because the other side of these storage shelves is important. Working in a studio, a production center, any business, you have stuff. Everyone has stuff and you need places to put that stuff. Um, and the amount of crap I've hoarded here over the last almost three years is ridiculous. But um, it's extremely vital. You know, I have a lot of costumes, cosplay stuff, random equipment, random art stuff and it just mounts. And you'll see throughout other places, there's more storage. Bringing these over here, I kind of made again another partition. I am not used to having all these separate spaces. It used to be very open, everything open, only things on the perimeter. I've really sort of changed things up. So speaking of storage, over here um, is more storage. This is a clothing rack, obviously, for the people who come to the studio, again, there's upwards of 100, 150 people a month coming to the studio to take classes. So there needs to be these sort of mini infrastructural things for people's coats, people put their bags. This is another just random storage rack. It has mostly camera bags, but anything I need, a good little corner just to shove crap. This is the entrance, by the way, um, just for orientation purposes. Right to the left of the entrance, we have this storage sort of system, this pillar is sort of in the way, but it perfectly fits these three shelves, which we have 
camera equipment, we have spray paint rack, and then my tool rack. You have to remember that this is also like a production studio. And sometimes, a lot of the times, it's sort of production first. It's production of the art. So they're hand in hand. I have so much camera gear over the last, you know, six plus years I've been doing this full time. I'm also very into it. I'm very passionate about documenting things. Cameras, lenses, equipment for that, it all builds up. Um, and so this is a really good central area to keep all of that. It's sort of a mess. There's the battery charging section. The number one rule in the studio is to plug in a new battery when you take one out. I always have spares of everything. I sort of buy things in twos. There's just a lot of junk. I mean, it works, but it's a lot of junk. Spray paint, again, I don't use much. There's a lot of bucket paint. There's some mirror equipment. It's just nice to have this. Um, it's kind of cool. As a kid, I always dreamed actually of having sort of like this spray paint rack. One of my art stores in my hometown was shutting down and I got these two racks. This used to be a spray paint rack that I converted. Um, these were going and I got them for free. So that's pretty cool. This is the painting rack. Again, I build a lot. I love to customize and sort of build things. Most of the studio has been built with these tools. I got enough power drills to make a house. It would take a while, but I do. And um, yeah, it's just part of part of the studio, constantly fixing things, building canvases, anything um, of the sort. Goes down here, and again, this is a, an accumulation of tools that I've you know kind of collected, bought, given over the last five, six years. So super important storage space. All the way over here is um, just like illustration cabinets. It's not that important. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of drawings from my history in there. Um, and other people's too, uh, but that's pretty straightforward. But those are really useful actually. Storage, baby, we're talking about storage. Moving to the right once you enter, we're entering the studio to my right, is the podcasting room. I call that because it was the podcasting room for over two years where I hosted Slooniverse. We did, I think, 26 episodes here. Chris was on there for a while. This room was dedicated for that, and I had the best time. I'm still doing podcasts. It's just not the forefront of my time now. Um, and I learned so much and I met so many amazing people and I have them sort of engraved, grailed on all of these Polaroids on my door sort of as memories, um, really happy times. But now that it's sort of the entrance, the portal to my office and my dedicated painting area. We're gonna be in here for a while, so bear with me because this is this room holds the two sort of biggest things in my life. Video editing, and that has to do with filming also, and then obviously painting. Yes, I took basically the painting area, which was a giant quadrant of the big room, and shoved it in here. It's basically the same setup. I got my French cleats, which is the system to move things very easily, and that comes from the desire and necessity to save space with tripods or big easels. Um, you'll see a lot of that I have sort of optimize the space to have as much free space. So there's no tripods here. It's just hanging stuff on the wall. This is also my pride and joy. This is my easel that I built. Probably the most awesome things I've ever built. I love it to death. It's like a family heirloom. It has this giant slab of glass. I have my oil paints out here. This is perfect for my camera to film. So it's sort of dedicated again, saving time. It's a dedicated setup drop down angle, um, it's on caster wheels. We got paper towel holder. I got my monitor that I hook up to my computer for reference. So this is like my traveling rig for oil painting specifically. We got more storage to the right over here also, just random crap storage, dedicated tape bin. We got frog tape, we got gaff tape, we got packing tape. There's painter's tape, double-sided scotch. Tape is by far one of the most useful tools, in my opinion, ever in this studio for sure. In this space, we also have this illustrative cabinet again. This is a bit smaller with sort of the flat top, storage underneath, surface area, surface area, surface area. I don't like drawers. These are specific drawers. Other than that, there's no drawers. Um, this is all the paint brushes, paint obviously. This is oil paint I don't use often. The oil paint I use the most often is sort of on the palette already. I have my own sort of core palette, but there's always other things I need. Back here, more storage. We got a big um, tabletop, storage underneath, rulers, more storage back there. Bunch of crap, bunch of junk back here, but um, it's all useful, you know, a lot of crafts. Things just need to be out, that's how I like it. There's enough room for it. One of the downsides I will say to um, moving in this smaller room, it's plenty of space, I completely agree, but it is smaller than what I had out there. So for example, this is like my main work desk. I like the idea of having a work desk 
like a workshop. You know, I paint over here um, and I sit and I use that, but there's always stuff to be cut, exacto blading, building things, laying canvases down. And so this is a hydraulic table that's super convenient. My editing setup is also hydraulic, so I can bring this really high or I can bring it really low, obviously. But this uh, hydraulic table is quite small for me. You know, I've, I'm coming from that big table out there, which was super big. And I love just to have as much space as possible via table because I work with big canvases sometimes that don't fit great on this. So that's something that I'm getting used to. And in a perfect world, I would love something twice the size as this, but it wouldn't fit in this space, but that's fine. Speaking of this whole studio that I'm beyond grateful to have, I've painted in my garage for years, you know, with no heat, no electricity. I painted in my super tiny apartment in Manhattan, just in my bedroom where there was only enough for like a queen bed. I've painted everywhere. I've made everything work. You know, I renovated an old crappy studio that didn't have Wi-Fi or heat for the first four years. That's how I started my YouTube channel. Customizing spaces and building up spaces is really important for me. Um, it's inspiring and you don't need all of this. You don't need the creme de la creme. People have way nicer studios than this and people have, you know, just their garages. And I think anything that works is the best. Anything to produce what you want to make is what you want to go for. So speaking of making things, a giant part of my life is behind a computer editing. So over here, this is the brain. This is the brains. Let me get a light over here. This is the brains of the studio, I like to say. I got a PC, uh, 3080 Ti, I forget all the other stuff. It's a really powerful PC that I bought right when I moved here because I deal with super heavy 4K files um, all the time. I also have two monitors, which I really like for you know efficiency, editing one screen, emails, other junk on the other. And I also have this new MacBook Pro which is extremely fast, M2, that I edit off a decent amount also when I need to. This is also on a hydraulic, which is super nice, that saves my back sometimes. And like I tell people this all the time, I am behind these computer screens equal, if not more, I would say for sure more than I am behind a canvas. So that's just the truth, that's the job. And staying on the topic of technology, I wanna talk about lights. Lights are my favorite, arguably the most important. Above me, I have lights for the painting area, and you could tell it's quite warm, trying to mimic more natural sunlight. But then I also have a lot of studio lights. This one is brand new. Well, it's not brand new, this softbox is brand new but I have a Godox 60 on here and it is attached to this awesome upside down tripod wall mount. So again, that I have zero you know, issues because I put the camera here. This is again, a dedicated shot shooting into my studio. No tripods, no wires anywhere. Dedicated, optimizing, saving time. This is my newest light I just got recently actually and I love it because I use that dedicated light for this new dedicated spot. I needed another smaller mobile. Um, this is the Amaranth 60XS and what I love about it that it's so small. If people don't realize how lights work, this is the light, this little thing. It's like a core and then this is called a softbox separate. So people think it's all one unit. You could buy any softbox. I could put a giant one on this light. This is just happens to be a small one. What's cool about this light, what I love, and I'm glad it worked out this way, it has all these V-mount battery holsters and I can connect a D-tap straight into this. These are huge batteries. So this is actually a wireless light and it is super bright, it's super great. Um, and I could kind of just bring it anywhere and not worry about it. You know, I'm moving lights around all the time for different shots, for different setups and such. So that's really great. This is a 32 inch hectagon softbox. The biggest one I have that stays in the giant main room is a four foot softbox with an Amaran 200D on it, which is super mega bright. And then above the model stand, dedicated model stand light is a Godox 120. So those are like the main light cores I have. I also have two newer, super old sort of crappy soft boxes. I use them a lot in the beginning days of YouTube, but they're great because they're super inexpensive and they are decently bright. I have two of those over like the gallery. I have two of these LED panels. These are super nice, um, super bright, any color in the rainbow, Bluetooth controlled. 
I have one sort of behind the uh, samurai, so that kind of stays there. This is in case I need some color or just another accent light because it could get warm or cool normal light. I don't know what happened before. I didn't film these or it didn't record. These are RGB light tubes. They're super bright. They're super fun. They go any color in the rainbow. You know, they're, they're really great for like accents. I don't use them all the time, but for effects, you know, they're quite nice. They're quite bright. These are just great to have. Battery lasts a while. And I have basically mini versions. These are magnetic. These also for just effect shots and random other things. These get pretty bright and uh, they're magnetic. So who doesn't like that? Last thing in this room we can't forget to talk about is cameras. Really the camera for me, a YouTuber, is the paintbrush, the metaphor, the analogy to, you know, my YouTube channel and to tell stories. Different cameras are there for different purposes. You know, my main A camera that's mediumly new is the Sony FX3. Quite expensive, full frame, best camera I've ever used. I can't believe how good it is. They recently just filmed um, The Creator, a huge blockbuster sci-fi movie on this exact camera. But you know, I still film with older cameras all the time. For example, the GH5, I take photos with this all the time. I take time lapses, I use this for podcasting. This came out I think in 2017, 2018, I don't really know, it's super old. But I still use it and it's still great. So um, there's so many different cameras. I, I used to have the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. This was like my first cinema camera. It was cheap for that genre of camera, it's great. Um, I don't use it that much anymore. Lenses are more important in my opinion. Obviously you want to have good quality cameras, but it depends on what you're doing. I love super wide, like the lens on right now. We go up super close, that gets the whole room. And then obviously a more zoom telephoto. So this is 24 to 105. Um, these are the only two lenses, a wide and the zoom lens for my Sony, for my main setup. I don't really need anything else. Another wacky camera equipment gear, this is a camera that I actually love and use so much now, is the Insta360. This is the X2, but it's super useful. Again, random vlogs, random unique shots. This camera is actually super capable. It doesn't do great in low light, but it's awesome. If I was to start this all over, again, I don't wanna rant. If I were starting as an artist right now, trying to promote my artwork, I would just use my iPhone and that's, that's the truth. Everyone wants to get all this camera gear and get all this stuff. And obviously they're great, they're amazing and they're useful. And you know, I think I make pretty awesome large scale videos. But if you're just starting out, don't need anything more than iPhone. Let's leave this room. Exiting the podcast room, my office, I can't not call it the podcast room. We are immediately greeted by the large drawing gauntlet setup. It all centers around this central column because there's a pillar right there that I have made the designated model stand. Now let's just talk about the backside real quick because I love it. Now because this model stand has this curtain sort of here permanently, another partition wall sort of thing, the backside of this uh, pole, which is in the center of three, was sort of dead space so I was like, oh, this would be perfect to sort of make this entire 360 center piece of the studio a nice countertop, tabletop matching sort of semicircle, custom semicircle um, desk. It was kind of challenging to build it because it's floating. People can put bags under there, more storage. You're greeted by your three lovely friends here. Plaster busts. Also, when people come here for the first time, they're so confused by this. This is just like a little cap to put on a five gallon. Super convenient for everyone to get water and it's super cheap. Yes, now this is where the magic happens. This is the drawing gauntlet. I have 18 drawing horses and maybe you're watching this video if you've stayed to this very end. What is all this for? I have started a school, a fine art institution, if you will, called Studio SLU. I've been talking about it a lot. It really just opened in September and we're still trying to get things off the ground. But the biggest renovation, again, it will be in the playlist that I did was a few weeks ago to build this stage back here to fit more people, to be able to have more people draw and partake in my figure drawing sessions and other workshops we have. Again, 18 drawing horses during these sessions, which I hold twice a week, Tuesdays and Wednesday nights, usually also on the weekends sometimes. All of the materials are set up. You get a drawing board, you get newsprint. You also have your choice of all of these materials. This is the area to sort of store all of the charcoal and drawing paper. It's just a nice little 
cubby again to sort of partition off different sections. So things are organized and there's a flow. You got all of your drawing stuff set up for you when you come in. And then if you don't have materials, a lot of people don't, you come over here, you grab whatever you need. We got a bunch of newsprint for people. We got charcoal pencils, sticks, pastel. We got markers. And then obviously right here, if you could see, beneath this hat is a QR code. It's an anonymous survey. Only for people who come here, you only have to take it once. So your first time I ask people to take it. It's like, how old are you? How long have you been drawing? How many figure drawing sessions have you been to? It's just good data for me to collect as an organization with the different people coming in and out. I don't want people on the video taking it. But if you take the survey, you get some stickers. I got stickers laid out for people who don't love stickers. Um, and I really like this zone. It makes good use of this space. And again, the opposite side of these storage racks. You just have to sign up online, studiosalute.org. Very awesome drawing horses um, in the semicircle facing the stage. Let's walk to the stage also because we have the tchotchke corner and sword hanging area, which is all sort of my fun stuff I've collected. This used to be in the podcast room on the table, but now it's just shrined here. We wanna have an awesome you know, gallery. This is all sort of the gallery wall to make it inviting, fun, inspiring. The point of Studio Slew is to bridge the gap between super traditional fine art education and instruction and then a social event space to be inspired that's fun, that's energetic and new. So it's molding all of those ideals. And I think having an inspiring setting is important for that. These huge windows are awesome also in the studio, but when you shoot this way, it gets all blown out. So let me try to take that away just a touch. Also, while I'm behind here, this is really fun because I can control the light really well in the studio. I could get darker than that. And then when the model's here at night, we shut off a lot of the lights except this one and the shadows become very intense and you love to draw and paint shadows because it's more dynamic and fun rather than super flat light. But that's the point of this. And also we can bring in other lights and do other crazy effects. But I love this model stage. It's quite higher than the older ones. It's bigger, this beautiful green backdrop because I love skin tones with green. That's just my opinion, green rug. Uh, it's just wonderful and everyone has a great view. There is no bad angle at all. You know, it's still small. 18 is a lot now, but you know, it's small enough where no one has a bad angle for the motto. This is sort of what I mean by more of the lights off. It's sort of just like a halo of light. Very awesome. Nude models, again, nude. It's very traditional to draw naked people with no clothing. Also clothing, also costumes. We get weird and wacky here, but older men and women and younger men and women, obviously adults, every shape, every size. It's awesome. And I have collected as if they're objects. No, I have a wonderful network of extremely professional models. Here in New York City, I think some of the best models in the world. I have over a dozen now because these classes are growing every week, every month. So it's super awesome. The models that come here, I love them so much. They're so talented at what they do and holding poses may seem easy, but uh, it is way harder than you think and there's a giant difference between a professional model and a amateur, I will say that. Figure drawing is the main core class session here. It's open figure drawing, so there's no instruction really. People walk around and everyone talks about their process, but it's just drawing from one minute poses up to 15 minute poses. But my plans are way larger than that. For Studio Slew, we actually have our first painting demonstration coming up on November 18th. If you're in New York City, you should definitely come and check it out. It's with Shannon Vaught, an amazing oil painter. She's doing an Alla Prima portrait demo where she's gonna talk about her process. I've been to a few painting demos. It's so valuable. I am so excited. Shannon is the bee's knees and it's gonna be amazing. So we're gonna fit 30 people here and she'll paint and talk, I'll record it. So things like that. Um, and then there will be also workshops here at Studio Slew. This is all in the future because I'm still getting it off the ground. It's all very expensive. I paid for all the renovations, all of the materials, everything, all the model fees. So way more to come. You could follow Studio Slew 
on Instagram to see more events and that sort of keep you up to date with stuff. Studioslu.org, where you sign up for classes like the Shannon Vaught demonstration, November 18th, or any other open figure drawing sessions. If you're coming to the city, check the website, maybe a class is available. I will also be releasing really awesome hoodies and t-shirts sort of labeled as Studio Slu, and 100% of those proceeds will go to the organization because it's a nonprofit. It's a public benefit for the public. Um, the organization, I profit zero from it. I actually have just been losing money every week, paying for models, paying for the renovations and all of the materials. But because I'm so passionate about it and hopefully in the next coming months and throughout 2024, it will be way more popular and get way more exposure, i.e. more money raised, have employees, do way more workshops, demos, all that good stuff. So again, questions, leave them in the comments. This is a long video, the most in-depth video I've ever done. Leave a like, I certainly enjoyed it, and it's good for me, you know, selfishly to document these stages and the changes of this space because so much has happened here, and looking back, you sometimes forget all the things you've done or the things I've built, and so these are good little, you know, checkpoints along the journey, along the path. I'm so grateful, I'm so lucky. Thanks to the people watching my videos the sponsors, it's really amazing. And I'm so excited to see where this goes in the next three years. Leave a booyah in the comments if you stay to this very end. What is this, a 30 minute video? Check out the playlist, it will be linked. All the good links, all the good stuff. Feel like I don't wanna forget anything, but I don't think I have. It was pretty crazy, long video, long editing. See you in the next video.